Bruchem Aboim. Again, welcome to our home. Thank you for attending. So this week on My Thoughts, um, topic is a picture in time. Again, this week on My Thoughts, I'd like to paint you a picture. Not with paintbrushes and canvas, but rather with words and phrases. You know, we live in the best of times and the worst of times. The world has never experienced a period of abundance that we witness today. At the same time, we've never possessed the capability to destroy the whole world as quickly as we can today. In the Torah, we read that before God Almighty brought the flood and destroyed all the world, it too was a period um, when the world population was blessed with affluence. There was such an overabundance of produce that people would only harvest their fields once in 40 years. It seems, that, it seems as if we don't want God to bother this time in destroying his world. We are actually volunteering to destroy the world for him. But why? It would seem that success is the hardest pill for mankind to swallow. Think of the world as a picture. Imagine a picture portraying a beautiful and serene summer day. In that picture, we view a scene where the sky is blue and there's a white wisp of clouds. The sun is bright and high in the horizon, casting its light and warmth on everything below. The grass is tall and blowing gently in the breeze. In the background, there's a tree with its branches extended in all directions. The branches are covered with leaves that welcome all those who are seeking refuge from the rays of the sun, a haven, a place to take shelter under the branches that its leaves afford. You know, a small bird that we see is perched on one of its branches. You can almost hear it sing its lovely song, uh, a true picture of beauty and serenity. However, if we look closer at the picture, we would witness a totally different scenario occurring under the grass. There, under the grass, there is no serenity. There is a war in progress. Everything below the grass is fighting for its survival. Plants are reaching for sunlight and water. The bigger foliage, which can easily reach above the ground, are many times blocking the smaller plants from attaining their, either their light or water. Small animals and insects are constantly foraging for food. Many times they themselves become some other animal or insect's dinner. To survive, they must constantly be on the alert. It is a violent and dark environment. It operates by the rule of nature, survival of the fittest. You know, I believe that we all live within this picture. However, we have a choice. We can live above the grass or we can live below it. Oh, which one would you choose? Well, the choice seems very obvious, yet many of us, consciously or unconsciously, choose to live below the grass, both on a personal level and also on a national and world level. But why? There are several varied reasons. I do believe that some people are born predators. They are totally at home under the grass. They thrive in the darkness and the violence. Others see themselves as undeserving, as victims, and therefore they make little effort to rise above the grass. They feel that they are, so to speak, getting what they deserve. And then there's the worst predators of all, the zealot the fanatic who, in the name of God Almighty, commits all types of barbaric acts of cruelty. You know, God is not connected to barbarism. God is not connected to evil. Evil can only exist when God removes his presence. And in that vacuum, evil can exist and even flourish. The Torah tells us in the portion of Bereshit that we as human beings were created B'Tselem Elokim, in the image of God. But God has no image. So what does this statement mean? That everything in creation follows God's command. However, we, as a reflection of God Almighty, have bechira, free will. We have the ability to choose how to live our lives above the grass or below it. This is our choice, not God's. Now, even a person chooses to live above the grass, you should know that there are times when the picture does change. Dark clouds begin to appear on the horizon, 
and the rain can fall, sometimes even torrential. The tree that was standing so tall with its branches extended, inviting all to visit, is now battling with the wind. It is fighting for its existence, trying to preserve its branches and its leaves, desperately fighting to stay connected to the earth. The little bird, well, is no longer in the picture singing its song. It is searching for shelter. It does not have the strength to overcome the powerful winds. Yes, the picture can change drastically for the worst. However, we must realize that even on the worst of days, the sun still shines above the clouds. In time, the picture will return to its original landscape of peaceful serenity. However, the war that ensues under the grass, well, that never changes. It always remains a struggle for survival, a life and death battle. The key word is survival. Even though life is difficult below the grass, all plant, animals, and insects that reside there somehow still continue to survive. However, when an outside force, such as fire or floods, occur, then survival is dubious, if not impossible. When predators that are not indigenous to the area take over, well, they make survival difficult again, if not impossible. They, are in, they indiscriminately destroy all that nature was able to sustain before they invaded. You know, I believe that we can view our world situation today much like the picture that I have painted with my words. We have a choice. We can live above the grass or we can live below it. Living above the grass is not a guarantee of happiness, but the odds are much greater. Storms do arise, but they are for the most part temporary inconveniences. We have the knowledge and we have the ability to prepare and protect ourselves from all types of harm. As we observe many times that after a storm, the picture that we witness is even more beautiful than it was originally. That cannot be said for the evil that can exist under the grass. Evil continues to perpetrate more evil until it finally destroys itself and everything around it. Think of evil as a cancer. A cancer will attack a person and will continue to do attack until it kills the host. The reality is that killing the person will also kill the cancer. However, hmm, the disease is so evil that it is willing to kill itself so as to be able to kill you. Again, the ultimate evil. Hadas, Hezbollah, and Iran represent that degree of evil. Those Hamas fighters that are in Gaza City are willing to die just as long as they kill Jews with them. They are even willing to kill their own people and put them in harm's way just to kill Jews. It is a hatred just for the sake of hatred. It is the ultimate evil. What joy can there be in cutting off a little baby's head? Everything done in the name of martyrdom. They believe that they are earning themselves a place in paradise. They are the tools of the devil, and they will spend their eternity with him in purgatory. So let us focus on each and every day that God Almighty grants us. Long life. Long life in Judaism is called the Richat Yomim. Translating these words as long life is really incorrect. The correct translation of a Richat Yomim is long days. We read in the Torah in the portion of Chayasura where it states that Avram Avinu, Abraham our father, bought by Yomim, that Avram came with his days. Avram Avinu lived each and every day of his life to the fullest. You know, that doesn't mean that every moment of every day was perfect. You know, I'm certain that his days were also filled with ups and downs, the same challenges that we all face, much like today. He too was compelled to deal with hostilities, war, famine, and abduction. But in the end of each day, the picture that he painted was always above the grass, never below. May God Almighty help us to concentrate on the good experiences in our lives. May we learn to use all of our experiences for our growth and happiness. Though we may view rain as an inconvenience or a negative in our lives, well, that negative is what makes everything else grow. 
so too should we view the events in each and every day of our lives as part of the picture that makes up our being on earth. The path to heaven is paved with failures and disappointments. That is how we learn. As I've said many times, good judgment comes from experience, and experience comes from bad judgment. We are all the artists of our own picture. We all have the ability to create a picture, one that depicts happiness and joy. But we need to approach life each and every day with a positive attitude. As the Alta Rebbe, the founder of the Lubavitch movement, stated, Trachgut Voltsangul, think good and it'll be good. Hopefully you get the picture. And with that, let us pray for the release of all the hostages and the total destruction of Hamas and all the evil in the world. May God Almighty protect all Jews in Israel and worldwide, especially the Israeli soldiers. May he heal the sick and injured and comfort all of the mourners. And may he bring an end to all the hatred and negativity that exists in the world today. Let us pray that it should happen quickly with the coming of Mashiach Sakana. Now. Again, thank you for listening. Thank you for attending. Again, our hopes and prayers are with our sisters and brothers in Israel. Um, God should be, bring a quick end to it. And it should be a positive end. Again, there should be, war brings casualties, but there should be as minimal as possible. But let us hope this is all what we call the Ikveda Mashiach, the footsteps of the Messiah may come quickly and with as little pain as possible. Again, thank you for attending. God bless and be well and Shabbat Shalom. And please, if you can, just hang on. I'll be introducing another song that I wrote shortly after this uh, class ends. Again, thank you very much. God bless and you should be safe. You should be healthy. You should be happy. God should bless you all. Thank you.